Hey, Firebrand X here with a video on the new jailbreak firmwares. I'm starting with the Super NT first. And my apologies for being a couple weeks late. I was not able to get to my lab. Uh, I also had some medical issues at the time, so that's sort of why. Uh, but I'm back at it, slogging through, doing the OCD stuff. Uh, these things are very tedious. It took me, you know, Super NT is the easiest one of the three consoles, uh, I believe. Uh, Mega SG and NT Mini Noir also have new firmwares where I've got to go through and recalibrate all the settings, and uh, it's not it's not going to be easy. It takes a while because I have to do a bunch of lossless captures just for one resolution mode, and load them into the Paint program. You know, measure the pixel edges on the sides. You know, like you know how thick is the border on this side? How thick on that side? Center it, recapture, check it again. You know, it's a very tedious process, but in the name of OCD, you got to do it. Somebody has to, anyway. All right, well, enough rambling. Let's get on with it. Let's go ahead and... Uh, I actually already saved some settings here, as you can see. But there's some other ones I need to do real quick, just for my own satisfaction. Change this boot sequence down to 1. Uh, you can try 0 if it works fine on your TV. Great. If not, I'm just leave it at 1. And of course, menu direct, thank you. And now let's back out and save. And now we're gonna go and load a game. And I'll go with Super Castlevania 4 because it has unique markers that are easy to spot for seeing how much you lose when you go to 5x scale where it's cropped down to 1080p. And we'll see that. So, Super Castlevania 4, there it is. And I'll just get to the third section of the first stage. It's a good spot. And I believe this is just simply a 4x by 4x uh, square pixel scaling. But I'm gonna change the horizontal and I'll show you how all that goes. play this game on here where I try to stay on the drawbridge as long as I can before either drowning in the moat or being slammed into the castle entrance. Pause it there. There we go. It's as good as a spot as any to get started on this. All right. So the first mode here I'm going to show is 4x with display aspect ratio correction. So hotkey out, press start, video, and the first thing you want to go to always is scalers because you don't want to miss these. If you don't get these set properly, you can actually you know hurt your experience. It won't be as enjoyable because you'll have interpolation where there doesn't need to be any. So here I need to uncheck that because I do need this interpolation on the horizontal. I don't need it on the vertical, so we leave that checked. Now I'll go to width and height. And uh, there's a problem here, uh, rather a recommendation I would have for Kevin on this, is 
the height and vertical position should be listed first. And the reason is your width labels are tied directly into height. So let's say, for example, I went to uh, um, say this, um, I don't know, there's a bunch of different ones I could try here. Um, okay, 4, 3 by 16. You know, this would be the one I would normally use anyway. But now, you, you know, say you were, you were wanting to do this 4, 3 by 16, 9 here, or 4, 16 by 9. And so you, without thinking, you adjusted for that for 5x scale, and you're like, oh, I need to change it to 5x scale. Watch what happens. Change it to 5x scale, and now your label is completely missing because now it's incorrect. It's not, that's not the 5x scale label. So now you have to try and find it again. So it's better, like say if you're here, here, you know, just getting started, it's better to go ahead and go to 5x and then, you know, or whatever, you know, whatever your height is. Do that first, then go to width and find that 4, four 3 for 16 by 9. And that's what you want. So because of that, I think the height and vertical position should be listed first and width and horizontal should be listed last. At any rate, let's get back to what we were doing. 4x scale with proper display aspect ratio correction. Let's get to that. And that's this one here. Now there's some labels on here. I'm really not sure what their point is or what they do. Uh, I could show you some examples here like um, this one-to-one -one ratio. I don't know what you would use that for. It's not square pixels and it's not any sort of correct aspect ratio. So I don't know what the point of that one is. Another one is this 8x7. That's not 8x7. Like, uh, if it's not square pixels, and it's not properly aspect corrected for, like, CRT displays. So what is this? Why does it say 8x7? You know, I don't understand that. Maybe it's, it's listed in the, you know, manual or notes or whatever, but, you know, I, I think some of these labels could be done without and just removed. At any rate, uh, and for this one, that's right, we need to subtract one on the width because that horizontal interpolation on some specific resolutions, it will actually, you know, stretch the image out by one pixel. So it would have been 1171. But you can counteract that by going in here and subtracting a pixel. So this 1169 will actually be corrected to 1170 by that filtering in the scalar menu. Uh, I believe this was the only mode where I actually found that I needed to do that. All the other ones that I'm going to show you, I didn't have to do that. And because we had to do that, we have to shift this up to 66 as a counterbalance, and that should be perfect there. And here we are. This is 4x scale with proper display aspect ratio correction. One of my personal favorite modes because you can see everything. All right, now Let's uh, hotkey back out and show semi full screen as I'd like to call it. All right, uh, video. Once again, you go to scalers first, and um, we're going to uncheck both of these because we're using a non integer scale on both axes. So we need to uncheck and make sure those are both active. Width and height. Now we want to immediately go to height first, 4.5, and width. Find that. Um, there it is, 4, 3, 4, 16, 9. So 13, 16 does line up with my math. Move that back down to 65, and I believe that, um, let's see here, for 4 and a half, it's 65, 31. So I actually need to adjust this to 31 to properly center it. And that should do it for that. And if you notice here, there's still some black borders on the top and bottom, and that's because the Super Nintendo um, sends out a 240p signal and just blacks out 16 of the lines. I think technically 17 of the lines. So you get like 239 active, uh, but they're painted black down to 224. However, you can draw graphics into them. Uh, Artemio's test suite shows that you can. And I'm sure there's hacks, homebrews, or whatever out there. Maybe even some edge case scenario Super Nintendo games where they use that extra bit of uh, overscan area. So I would recommend leaving it like this for those you know, edge case scenarios. That being said, let's check out 5X. Hotkey out, press start, video, scalers first again. We're gonna 
disable V but leave H active, as usual. Width and height. Now we immediately go to height first. Get that to 5. Get this back to like 28, I believe it is. Yes. 65 is correct. And then we just need to adjust this to 43 for 16 by 9. And that should do it. We'll back out. And here we are, 4.3 for 16.9 in um, 5x scale. Now if you notice, the weapon box up there, like about 3 or 4, probably 4 pixels are cut off. Same thing down at the bottom, 3 or 4. I think it's 4 on the top and bottom that are cut off each. And uh, if you're okay with that, you know, most games it's not going to bother you. So you might actually like this mode just as a default. Uh, and then there's some games like the Street Fighter games. They're letterboxed in the game itself, so they don't even get affected by this. In fact, let's load that up and check that out. I could do like uh, Super Street Fighter 2, do that one. I used to be okay at these games when they were new, but I'm not that good anymore. I'm a scrub. I'm, uh, based on what I saw from Bob, I, I probably could take Bob. <laughs> All right, let me uh, go to options here. Ah, I hate that. You go to options and you press the button and it just goes back. That's so dumb. All right, uh, light punch, I do that. Heavy punch, I do that. Medium kick, heavy kick, there we go. Uh, let's get out of here. It's super powerful. I guess I'll just play it. But you can see here, none of the graphics are cropped. Uh, you could actually vertically center it and just go in to your width and height and adjust the vertical position up a bit to center it. But you can see nothing gets cut off. That's it's great for that. That usual cheap crap that the computer does to block that. Just go ahead and uh, KO him and call it done. Then we'll do some Super Game Boy stuff. Technically Super Game Boy 2 for me. Ah. Oh, your ass is mine. Mm. Damn, I wanted to... Dragon Punch, I screwed it up. You win. Okay, you get the idea there. Let's go ahead and stop screwing around and get to the Super Game Boy stuff. So, hotkey out. And this time we're going to back completely out. And run cartridge. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. There's probably, I don't believe I saved sound being turned on. Because we're going to get to that next. After we do the video settings here. So, I'm going to do my hotkey. Uh, press oh that's right you can't press start you actually have to navigate the settings physically when you're running a, an actual cartridge uh, video of course scalers again first and this time it's gonna be square pixels as large as we can get them 5x is already good and I need to change that to 5x and I believe Let's see, 6528, that's correct too. Okay, that's it. And now we have uh, aspect corrected based on the handheld. The handheld used square pixels, so why not use them on this? I mean, you're going to have a far more enjoyable experience with double sharp pixels, you know. Uh, if you want to be faithful to the Super Game Boy border graphics, just use the display aspect ratio correction uh, settings that I have in the text file that, that I have mentioned here in this video. You know, either way, it's up to you. But uh, what we need to address is the elephant room. Elephant in the room is the uh, audio. So we'll back out, go to audio, and here I'm going to turn the cartridge audio down to 100. It's a bit loud on the su the Super Game Boy 2. And then we're going to enable cartridge audio. And uh, what I want to say about this is, don't save these settings because you'll forget and then you'll be playing regular Nintendo games or regular Super Nintendo games 
and you'll have this added uh, unnecessary extra no analog noise floor and you don't want that there's no no reason to have extra analog noise floor when you can have pure digital so don't save these just manually turn them on each time you want to you know use a super game boy or whatever but let's go ahead and enable it and uh, check it out Go ahead and wrap up here. Uh, I want to thank you so much for being patient with me on this. Sorry about the health issues and being out of commission for a couple of weeks. I'm getting better. You know, I was finally feeling well enough. Like last night, worked all night on the settings, and tonight I've been working all night on the recording. So, uh, getting back into the groove of it. Uh, but yeah, next video I'll probably do the Mega SG and save the NT Mini Noir for last, since. Uh, that's going to be a beast to do like the 15 cores, 15 or 20 cores that it has. Where I'm going to have to spend, it's probably going to take a week, like I say, it's probably going to take a week to, to actually plow through every single core on that. Uh, but I will get there and I appreciate your support and thank you so much for watching. Check you later.